Well, thank you very much, Sherry, and uh, let, let me start by uh, offering you a, a very uh, warm and heartfelt uh, welcome to the uh, Ocean Leadership uh, Fold. And at the same time, where's Bob? Is Bob here? Somewhere in the back. Uh, I, I can't pass up the opportunity to, to thank Bob for his years and years of tremendous leadership. And as Rod mentioned, we're going to hear much more about that over the next couple of days. So thank, thank you, Bob. I'm going to start with uh, paraphrasing uh, a great uh, poet, a, a songwriter of uh, at least my generation, and, and be happy I'm not going to sing it because every time these words go through my head, I want to. And that's that the, the climate, it is it is a change. Me. <laughs> and nowhere is this change more evident than, than in the Arctic. I, I'm not a climate scientist. I'm, I'm just a simple simple member, as uh, Fran mentioned. And, and, uh, but over the past, uh, well, since 2003 or so, um, supporting our efforts to establish the limits of our extended continental shelf in the Arctic, uh, we are actually going through the process of establishing those limits, even though we're not party to the treaty. I've had the opportunity to uh, work in the high Arctic um, and have basically been up there almost every year. I've witnessed firsthand this climate change. Uh, many of us have seen uh, plots like this. We'll see them many more times, I'm sure, in the course of uh, of our session this morning, and this is the uh, reduction in the Arctic ice minimum over the last 35 years with this remarkable trend of uh, 12 to 13 percent over a decade. And this year we'll talk more about that. But sometimes uh, plots like this really don't have the impact that they should. And so what I'd like to do in setting the context for our session this morning is offer you a look out the window and a chance to see what this change really looks like. Almost every year as we would head up uh, north in the Arctic on the Healy, uh, we would run into the ice margin somewhere around uh, 75 or 76 degrees. Um, that was starting again back in 2003. And if we look out the window, way up at 80 degrees north, about 200 to 300 miles into the ice, it looked something like that. That was very, very typical. And even in 2007, which was at that time the, the minimum ice extent, that's what it looked like at 80 degrees north. And you can see the ice has been degraded, there are melt ponds, but there was still ice there. And we still ran into the ice margin at about 76 degrees north. But in 2012, we happened to be at the same spot at about the same time as this picture was taken. And in 2012, it looked like that. It was remarkable. We had not yet run into the ice margin at 80 degrees north. This, of course, was the minimum extent, the record breaking minimum extent in that year. But then something happened in 2013, and the ice came back. I wasn't on the heat reef. I actually was on that little sailboat. I, I was backing, pulling AUVs, really, really. It really was. Um, but the ice came back that year. Because there's, there's always annual variability. It's just like the difference between weather and long-term climate trends. And our friends in the press had a field day with this return of the ice. We saw headlines like Arctic sea ice up 60%, and now it's global cooling. Now they have 29%, but the press isn't always so good with numbers. <laughs> Al Gore forecasted uh, ice free Arctic by 2013, ice cover expands 50%. Well, the ice had returned, but they, they really only told half the story. What they forgot to mention was an important fact, is that even that with that return of ice in 2013, it still was the sixth lowest ice extent, minimum ice extent that we've had in recorded history. And so the climate, it is a changing. And in the context of this forum, let me continue my riff on Dylan and say, come senators and congressmen, please heed the call. And to mothers and fathers across the land, don't criticize what you can't understand. It's our responsibility an obligation of scientists who have some understanding of what's going on to inform and to explain, but also to be honest and forthright about what we don't know. To our senators and to our congressmen and to the mothers and fathers across the land, and which is why we're here, and why our first session is focused on the changing Arctic, and why I'm so pleased to introduce our speakers. We have, as Sherry pointed out, four eminent scientists who study different aspects of Arctic climate change 
an independent congressional staffer, who was also a scientist, as Sherry pointed out, who will offer a, a congressional perspective. The bios of the speakers are in the program, so I don't have to go into that. And in trying to make sure that we have plenty of time for questions, I'm going to just jump right in and introduce Cecilia to basically explain about this issue of climate change.